Welcome everyone. Um, today we are going to talk about um, structs again, and we're going to finish up the structs lecture that was that was continued from last week. So yeah, let's begin. So what we'll cover today, um, we will finish up structs in Rust, uh, which will talk about methods, associated um, associated functions. Actually, I wrote that wrongly, and as well as the debug trait. So. The optional reading um, is actually chapter 5.3 of the Rust book, it's the method syntax and the lecture itself um, closely follows the, the textbook so if you have trouble following the lecture feel free to check out the textbook as well. So just to do a quick recap um, of what we covered last week, so structs are composite types that hold multiple related values and the key difference between structs and tuples is that in a struct you name each piece of data which is called a field. So um, as we showed last week, so this is how we define a struct. We have a name and then these are the different fields and the types. And then um, this is the type of the struct and this is the instance of the struct where we create a, a specific instance of the struct with specific values for each field. So um, today we'll go through a new example of a struct. So here I've defined a new struct called rectangle. Um, which has two fields, which is as width and height of type U32. And here we create an instance of the rectangle called rect and then width 50 and height 100. Right, so what's the common thing that we want to do with the rectangle? We want to calculate the area. So those of you who are fast would immediately see that, oh, okay, so it's really easy to get the area. We just do rect.width times rect.height, right? So this dot notation was introduced last week where you access the fields of the struct instance. So all this is um, simple enough, but it also comes with some problems, right? So what if we have a more complex function essentially, like other than um, calculating the area, what if we wanted to find the angle of the diagonal, right? So this would maybe involve um, calling some trigonometric function to find the angle, or what if we want to do some other more complex task, right? So um, it's going to be hard to write um, a lot of code um, for for that one struct and then it only works for one instance of the struct. So this another problem that can come up is that you have different code for different instances. For example, the area. So if we want to find the area of one rectangle, we do this. If we have another rectangle and we want to find the area of that rectangle, we have to repeat um, this code, but we replace the rec with another rectangle. So obviously we can see that um, this is not ideal um, because there's a lot of code repetition right so what's what's one way to do this right so the the quick answer would be to write everything into a function right so the how we calculate the area now is we use the dot notation to get the width and the height and then we just return it but what if we put that into a function so let's take a look so this is an example of um, a function so function rec area what it takes in is it takes in this variable rec of type rectangle and it returns a u32 which is the, the area of this given rectangle, right? So this does exactly as the same one line of code that we have here, right? Except now we put it into a function called rec.width um, rec area and then it runs rec.width times rec.height and now every time we want to find the area of a specific um, instance of the rectangle struct, we can just call rec area with the name of the struct, right? Notice that um, this takes in a reference, right, and doesn't take ownership, so we pass it in a reference to the struct. So this is um, a quick way that we can prevent code repetition, is we put the code that we need into the function, and then we can just call the same function for different instances. So actually, Rust itself provides a really good way for us to do that, and it's, called, it's through this thing called methods, right? So methods are essentially functions that are defined within the context of a struct. So the methods, uh, again, the methods are functions that are tied to a specific struct type, right? So um, some of you might, as we go through methods, you might think that actually this is very similar to a function. But um, a bigger important a bigger and more important reason for methods is that they help with organization, right? So you understand this as we look more into it. So for example, here again, we have an instance of a rectangle called rec, right? So just now, like if we use the function that we defined earlier, we can call the function rec area on the specific instance. However, with methods, the syntax is actually like this. We have the rec instance, and then we just use the dot notation 
so rec dot rec area and this met this function here would actually be a method right so now we're going to talk about how we define a method so firstly we use the uh, IMPL keyword so IMPL stands for um, implement or implementation right so we implement for the type which is a uh, here the type is rectangle so here basically means so this implement um, is called a IMPL block right in or an implement block so this is a whole block of code where we have functions that are tied to the rectangle type right so um, building on the same example that we have earlier of area so now we have this function called area and it take and it takes in a type self right so what does this mean um, so we have this function of type area and it takes in a type self this is basically the specific instance that we are giving into it right so for example just now we call um, we we said that in the method syntax we'll write rec dot rec area right so basically the first rec that calls dot area the rec will be passed in here as self and now we can use the self inside the function and we can do self dot width times self dot height right and this is the exactly the same functionality as before and it returns us the area so um, this self um, that we, as we see here this m percent self is actually a shorthand Right, so it actually um, is the same as previously in the function we defined, where we have a rect um, of type rectangle. Right, so this self will take in the type of whichever um, type or whichever like struct uh, impl block that it is it is found in. So um, since we've already learned about ownership, um, it's worth talking about ownership here as well in the context of um, the methods of a, of the rectangle struct. Right. So here is an percent self, which means that it takes in a, a reference, right? Note that this is a reference, um, doesn't take ownership, it doesn't take a mutable reference. So this is just a reference. So we cannot mutate this instance in this function, right? We can only read the values, which is what we are doing here, right? However, we can, um, as, we, as I said just now, we can actually take in a mutable reference if you want to modify the instance of the struct, or we can even take ownership of the whole struct, even though this is, um, this is a rare case. So an example of taking a mutable reference will be, for example, now we have this uh, method change width of rectangle type. Um, so here we see that the first parameter it takes in is an n and mute self, right? So this is a mutable reference, and we need it because um, we want to set the width. So we take the instance and we want to set the width to a new width that we also passed in. So this modifies the instance of the rectangle struct, right? So to be able to modify, um, we have to take in a mutable reference. So the last way we can pass it in um, is we can let the function uh, or let the method take ownership of the instance itself, right? So this is a rare case um, and um, usually is, used, um, is useful in constructors. So for example, um, here I created this method called swap. Right, and it takes in ownership of the instance and it returns a new instance, right? So in this swap function, I always return a new rectangle of width and height 42 and 42. So um, the instance that we passed in earlier um, now is no longer valid and it returns a new instance. Another example uh, where we can see that it, it takes ownership and it's like move into the function. Again, I have a function called um, I have a method called disappear and it takes in, it takes in the self so it takes in the whole um, the instance of a rectangle is moved into this function right so and now because I don't return anything so afterwards after here um, the instance since it's moved into this function it will get dropped and from where we call this disappear function if we try to use the instance again we will get an error because the instance has been moved and it's no longer valid so the last thing I want to cover is um, associated functions. So associated functions um, are very similar to methods in that they are functions that are defined um, within the context of the struct, right? So they are functions that have some relationship with the struct, right? However, um, associated functions do not act on a specific instance, right? So only methods act on specific instances. The functions themselves um, um, are related to the type. So in, in for example, we'll, 
will have associated functions that are tied to the type rectangle rather than a specific instance of a rectangle. Right, so if uh, people who are more familiar with Java, this is a bit like static methods in Java, where the methods belong to the class rather than the object of the class. So let's look at some examples. So here again, we have an implementation block for rectangle. But here, instead of a method, we now have an associated function, right? So it's an associated function because it's defined within the block of the rectangle type. And so for example here, um, it's commonly used for constructors. Um, we have we have new, right, the new function. So it takes in the width and the height, and it returns a new instance of type self, right? So for example, here, we return a new rectangle of the given width and height. So this is an associated function because it doesn't take in an instance, right? So it belongs to this um, rectangle type, and we can create a new one. Another example of an associated function that I've written here, so this is a bit of a toy example. It actually doesn't do anything, but it tries to bring the point across. So because again, this description function belongs in the rectangle block, it's an associated function. It doesn't take in any instance, right? So it's not a method. So what this does is it returns a string, um, which we just says I like parallelograms more, right? So how do you actually call an associated function, right? So um, associated functions are called like this. So you have the type name rectangle followed by a double semicolon and then the associated function name itself, right? So this contrasts with the way we call a method that we've introduced uh, earlier, right? So to call a method, you have the instance and you use a dot notation dot the method name. For an associated function, we use the type, so it's rectangle, and then double semicolon, and then the associated function name. So the last thing I want to talk about, <coughs> um, excuse me. So the last thing I want to talk about is actually this um, debug trait. So actually, it's very simple. Um, we're going to talk about traits in a later lecture, but how it's relevant here is that when we define a struct like this, for example, rectangle, we can add this line above here, which is a like a hashtag and then derive bracket debug. So what this does is it allows out it allows us to print out um, specific instances of the struct, and this is really helpful for debugging. That's why it's called the debug trait. So here we have an example. So now that we have defined the struct with this debug trait, we can do for example here print line. We print out the rectangle, and it will print out the rectangle with all the fields inside and the values, right? So another way, this is called a pretty print. Um, we print out the instance of the rectangle and it prints it out um, each field on a new line. So this is uh, quite helpful in showing the, the, the struct and like what are the actual values in the field of the struct um, for debugging. So to recap, structs are composite types um, and they have named fields. And um, for the implementation block of a struct, we have methods and we have associated functions, right? Methods are called on an instance of the struct, whereas associated functions are called on the type, right? So a rectangle type will have a rectangle type associated functions, whereas instances of the rectangle will use methods, right? So um, methods can take in um, a reference, which is n self, a mutable reference, which is n mute self, or it can even take ownership of the instance where the instance is moved into the method. Right. Um, on the other hand, for the associated functions, they are called in this syntax where we have the type followed by the name of the associated function. Right. And lastly, we covered this derived debug, which you put on top of your struct definition, and it allows you to print stuff out nicely. So, um, homework seven is released uh, on Prairie Learn. It covers it covers the struct things that we talk about, and it's due next Wednesday at two three five nine. So last um, last Friday we released MP one. So this will this will be due um, next Friday, not so soon, and MP two will be coming soon. So again, um, if you need any help understanding any of this, come to our office hours, or even if there isn't any office hours, feel free to ask in the Discord, and someone will help you. Have fun coding Rust.